Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can perform a one sample proportion z-test with Python. I'm using a Fire Anaconda Jupyter Lab uh, and running a Python 3 kernel, uh, I think it's 3.9.7. Um, this test is uh, sometimes used as an approximation to an exact uh, binomial test. And if the sample size is extremely large, that could take a very long time and then perhaps a a normal approximation is uh, slightly better. Um, there are two versions actually of this test. Uh, one is known as the score test that uses the expected proportion to calculate the standard error or standard deviation. And there is a walled version which instead of using the expected proportions uh, it uses the observed proportions. I'll quickly go over an example. I won't go into too much details. Um, you can read more about it on my website if you're interested, but uh, hopefully this should be good enough. Um, I need some data, so I'm going to load that using pandas um, read CSV. I've installed pandas before. If you've never used pandas before, you can use probably a pip install. Uh, I only need to load it. By the way, I'll actually restart my kernel and clear all the outputs. And there we go. Now I can uh, load the data file and I will be using gender as an example. And to get a quick impression of that, I can use the value count. So this is just my data frame, the field that I'm interested in and the value counts. And I store that under observed, so OBS. So there were 34 males and 12 females. Now uh, I'm gonna set the first category as success. So that's uh, category zero because array start at zero and therefore it's 34. Now we can use uh, the sum to get both of these added together and 34 plus 12 should equal 46. I'm going to set my expected proportion to be 0 0.5 and now the probably the fastest way to actually perform this proportion z test is to use the function called proportions underscore z test or z test not sure uh, from stats models and once I loaded that in I can simply use it by setting my observed counts of number of successes, my total sample size, my expected proportion. Also this uh, proportion variance should be set to that expected proportion and I want to see a two-sided test. Now this first value is the so-called z uh, value, this uh, test statistic and this is its significance, two-sided, because I opted for that. So this shows uh, it's below 0.05, which is the usual threshold. So this means that uh, there is a 0.0012 rounded uh, chance of having a Z value like 3.24 or more extreme. Uh, if in the population the expected proportion would be 0 0.5. Now this is very low, so probably that assumption is wrong, so the two proportions are probably not distributed like 0 0.5. If you don't like installing a third-party software or if you a uh, library, or if you want to apply a Yates uh, continuity correction, we can simply actually do the math a bit ourselves. Uh, we have the formula over here, which is n times my expected proportion. So I'm going to be loading that in. And this is the uh, average times 1 minus that expected proportion. So this is going to be n times uh, PO. That's the average. So I could actually just do here m. Uh, times 1 minus and then uh, the expected proportion and this means raised to the power of a half which is actually the same as taking the square root of something. Then I can calculate the z value and that's 3.2437 so you notice that's almost the same as over there. Next um, I want actually to have the uh, probability uh, of having such a z value um, what's easiest done is then to actually take the absolute value, so in case this might have been negative, you take the positive and then you put a minus in front of it so that it will always be the negative version. I call this Z adjust just so that I know it's different from the original Z. And then I can use the normal distribution, which is in Python statistics library uh, since 3. Point something. Um, 
So I can load that in and then I can use the cumulative density function. I multiply it by 2 because I wanted a 2 tilt and that should give me the same probability as earlier. And there, there's a small rounding difference at the end but it's almost exactly the same. Like I mentioned before, if you want to use a Yates continuity correction, um, I didn't see that in the stats models uh, version, so I will have to use uh, it myself. You take the absolute value of the difference and then you subtract a half. So I can simply do that and then I get my new Z value and of course have to calculate again the probability of that. It's a little bit different but not that much. Now the wall test is using a different uh, sigma, standard error. It's using the proportion as in the uh, sample. So that's where X comes into play. So I can simply say, well, that's going to be my new standard error is going to be X uh, times one minus uh, X over N. And again, take the square root out of that by uh, raising it to the power of a half. And then I can calculate my new Z value. And of course, use my normal dist function, cumulative density function to actually obtain the new um, probability significance. Uh, you could do this actually also with the stats model uh, library. Uh, in that case you just don't set that prop var uh, parameter and if you leave that out you should get the exact two same results. You see the 3.69, 3.69 and 0 0.0022, 0 0.022. Only in the very end uh, the decimal is slightly different but I think that's just rounding error somewhere. Again, we could apply continuity correction also to this, uh, of course, not with the stats models, but we can do it ourselves and calculate the normal distribution. The, with the normal distribution, the probability value, the p-value or significance. And that's about all the different variations I could think of. I uh, hope one of them was the one you were looking for. Uh, there is also a Poisson approximation to the binomial distribution, but I don't think that's so relevant if you're doing a test if to see if two proportions are the same, because then usually your p-value is set at 0 0.5, and for the Poisson approximation it needs to be very small. I do put it in my Jupyter notebook, for which I will leave a link in the description below. Alternative to all of this, you could sometimes also perform a goodness of fit test. Um, I have separate videos on how to perform those. They're usually done if you have more than two categories, but could also be applied if you have only two. Uh, for which you then can also apply a Yates continuity correction, or even an ES Pearson correction, or a Williams correction. And if there's a Pearson chi-square test, there's also the G test, which is also uh, using the chi-square distribution and to that you can then also apply the Yates correction and the Williams correction or the Pearson correction and I put all of that also in one massive function over here that if you run that um, it can calculate any of the ones you want depending on your settings um, but okay that's way too much to go over in this short video I still hope it was helpful if you want to know more about any of these let me know in the comments below and hope it was helpful for you. Thank you for watching.